I'm going to talk to you about um, a program of research uh, that was started. Our first grant was funded for this in 1990. And it's called Socially Optimized Learning in Virtual Environments, SOL. And this talk today is going to involve um, developing, evaluating, and disseminating uh, a game for HIV prevention. And we're doing it from beginning to dissemination um, in a single NIMH grant, um, and that's uh, our funder. But I uh, must mention that uh, early funding was from CHIRP, and without that early CHIRP funding, we would never have gotten off the ground. So. Um, I'm going to sort of remind us that the incidence here is still highest among men and among, uh, among MSM, among men. And this is the same chart you saw earlier, and so it's really the youngest guys that we have to worry the most about. Um, younger MSM may have tuned out of traditional HIV prevention interventions, and some years ago the CDC suggested that we should have more engaging interventions for them. Um, but traditional interventions have focused on changing skills and deliberative cognitive processes, such as beliefs, norms, intentions, and self-efficacy. But our early uh, formative research, extensive interviews, suggested that we were really neglecting affect, and that what happens in the moment that may lead to more automatic risk-taking despite one's best intentions was being overlooked. Um, our theoretical model for this um, actually dovetailed very nicely with uh, neuroscience model of decision making that came out by uh, Bashara and the Damasios. Um, and <coughs> like many health theories, cognitions and skills matter. And from an intervention perspective, this would mean that we would need to change problematic cognitions, knowledge, beliefs about the self, others, HIV, and so forth enhance negotiation and kind of skills, and better link current behaviors with future outcomes and consequences. Um, and also, but unlike many health theories, emotion matters too, and this involves affect, uh, affect bias in the decision-making process, and this is based on prior emotional experience of a comparable real-life uh, and or virtual situation that can automatically guide behavior without conscious awareness. And we were particularly interested in creating very similar contextual and emotional challenges uh, as in real life and to try to enhance self-regulation in the moment and to reduce shame. And shame was particularly important and why might it matter? Uh, well, when men who have sex with men often face a social sanction disapproval from the sexual deviance and there can be sexual stigma which can be internalized uh, with this painful emotion, shame. Um, and although shame can predict risk-taking, uh, its link to sexual risk-taking is unclear. Uh, but this can be activated, shame, especially for the younger men, can be activated immediately before deciding not to use a condom because there may be conflicting uh, cognitions that come into play and emotions. Uh, they may desire another man, but their beliefs may tell them that they shouldn't. Um, so socially optimized learning in virtual environments is an interactive game which was designed to capture these uh, in the moment, interactive uh, narratives. So in earlier work, we developed interactive videos for separately for separate groups of Latino, white, and black young MSM. And MS MSM assume the role of a character on a virtual date with an attractive other, and they make very contextualized virtual decisions that guide how the narrative proceeds. Um, ethnically matched virtual guides and models instead of face-to-face -face ones and were developed in three separate, separate IOV for the three separate groups. And these guides pop up and guide the user and scaffold the user into safer decision-making uh, when the user makes a risky choice. Now we found from this early work, this was funded by NIAID, um, that, we, that it was uh, UAI act reduction uh, was, uh, 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 we had UAI uh, numbers of UAI acts was reduced over three months in the interactive video versus the control, but only for our younger group of men, 18 to 24. Um, so what can significantly change? Well, a lot of the cognitive, cognitive components change significantly pre to post, um, and so did affect. But what's really interesting in this population, this is the second uh, interactive RCT we did, and the cognitive components always change pre post, but none of the change in the cognitive components actually predicts change in UAI. And this was the first time I was seeing a change pre-post actually predicting a change in UAI over time, and that was for a reduction in shame. 
So I was very excited about that. Um, these findings were promising, but it was very difficult to migrate the, uh, the IAV technology with um, these clips uh, and having people do this over the web uh, for national dissemination. And so with an NIMH grant, we developed a solid game using uh, Platform Unity, uh, which is a game platform cross-platform flexibility. So what does uh, Solve the Solve Game do? Well, it immerses uh, MSM in virtual worlds, simulating a virtual date, and many common challenges to safer sex, where the men must make decisions for their avatars as in real life, that affect how the action proceeds. Now, the users uh, choose their own character, um, and they can customize their character in a lot of different dimensions. And then this character plays the game and makes a, a series of choices. Now, in designing this, we use something called represent, we call representative design. And this is where we were really designing the environments and the challenges to mirror the challenges and the context and the associations among them that were the case for these men in real life. Um, so, our social guides are one tool for promoting behavior change and solve before we use guides and mentors that would pop up. And solve it, we thought that was a little hokey. Um, so, we thought about it, and we came up with this idea of using a virtual future self. So we took the character that users developed, and we aged the character, and that became the guide. And I think part of the inspiration for this was the thought that a lot of us, even as adults, I mean, how many times are we doing something or driving along, and we say, Lynn, what are you thinking? You know, you sit, you talk to yourself, right? And this is a lot like little, little kids do. Uh, they talk out loud about so I thought, well, maybe this would be a good idea of internalizing this uh, kind of self-talk uh, with a virtual other. Um, so the virtual future self acts as a, his pers a man's personal guide, scaffolding change in cognition skills and emotional self-regulation. So we were trying to reduce shame. So how do we do this and enhance self-regulation? So we did this with a lot of careful design to make a sex positive intervention. So for example, the player's avatar consistently models positive self-appraisals and comfort with his own sexuality and desires. Um, with the virtual self, future self, we treated this as a good parent based on developmental research. Um, so we wanted to encourage men to acknowledge their emotions and desires as normal for them and to do this with what we called a self-regulatory narrative circuit. So the circuit goes like this. It involves an ICAP, what we call an ICAP process. Um, this was to interrupt an automatic risky virtual choice and to challenge it because it was risky, to challenge beliefs and attitudes, to acknowledge, accept, and share uh, men's attraction to this man and his desires. This is, of course, you would find this guy cute and adorable. Um, so it was a very sex positive intervention uh, designed to reduce shame and to avoid what often seemed to be a, a kind of preachiness in a lot of interventions that we saw. So we want to acknowledge and clarify multiple goals, such as intimacy, desires, and desire to avoid HIV, and to provide a means to deal with these various goals and motives and emotions with more positive outcomes, such as having anal sex. Uh, <coughs> and that work was published in 2006 for the basic uh, model. Then the user has a second chance choice to be risky or safe, and all these cho choices are recorded. Um, so SOLVE promotes changes in cognitions and emotions in many ways, using the BFS to interrupt risky choices, to offer advice. Uh, and at the end of the day, the BFS does a recap. I don't have time to go through that, um, but he does a variety of different recaps depending on the choices that the user made. As an overview of the game, uh, for after post-baseline measures, the user customizes their character, they hear about and they get ready for a date, they meet the virtual future self, they decide to or not to use condoms in their apartment, and then they go on to the first level of the game, which is a party at a friend's house, uh, followed by a recap of what you did and what you could have done differently, followed by a level two of the game, where you go to a bar or a club, which is much harder to achieve, and your partner is just more difficult about negotiating safer sex. Um, so the goal of the game is to meet the guy, go home with him, and to go to negotiate safe for sex with your VF, VFS there by your side, uh, trying to guide you and scaffold you in uh, safe for sex. We had eligible participants who were HIV negative, self-identified, 18 to 24, and had had UAI uh, with a non-primary partner in the last uh, three months. And so um, what we did for this is we had, this was an online data collection, and uh, so we had lots of advertisements in a variety of different, through a variety of different means. 
And then we have a screener, baseline measures, a solve and erective game or weightless control group, and then an immediate post intervention and three month follow up measures. Uh, we had 921 men from around the country, and we had a three month follow up with about 69% retention. What we found was that uh, men's reported unprotected anal intercourse is related to shame, and that there was a uh, we hypothesized that MSM exposed to salt would show more shame reduction from baseline to immediate post than MSM in the weightless control group, and we found this again. And then we found that shame reduction due to the intervention is predictive of UAI reduction over three months. Okay, so the summary of these findings is we significantly reduced shame for MSM. I think it's one of the first interventions to do so. I think it is the first. Uh, demonstrate that shame reduction due to an intervention is predictive of risk reduction over time, and this has just recently been published in JIAS. Um, so future directions, we're still analyzing our data. We're, we are now playing with the six months data. Um, we have some interesting findings for that on the time to talk about. But we also use aut autonomous agents in our work. And these are agents where you set the parameters for what the agent is going to be like. So you can interact with an infinite number of different partners with all kinds of different risk kinds of situations. And the other part of this is that you can use the simulation tools to try to model what the user is doing in the game and to try to anticipate with your computational models what the user is doing. And one possibility with that is, uh, is sort of reflected in our current NIDA funding, which is to use uh, the game and to have men who are in the scanner while they're playing the game and to do computational modeling of the decision making and to try to triangulate that with the neural signals while they're playing a game. 